Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of My Unfair Advantage. We're going to be talking about your online business plan today. It's so important and so many people totally drop the ball when it comes to creating a business plan. And even if you have some kind of like a little business plan scribbled on like a little post-it note or something, you don't stay on focus. You don't stay on track and you end up getting pulled in a whole bunch of different directions and then complaining about information overload. Oh my God, it's not my fault. Oh yeah, it is. It is. Uh, as a matter of fact, when you succeed in business, it's your fault. You succeed because of what you did to get there. When you fail in business, it is your fault. You fail because of what you did or didn't do to get there. So I'm going to talk to you here about creating a business plan. You got to have a plan. If you're trying to get somewhere that you've never been to before, you need directions. If you're trying to succeed in business, you need a plan. And so many people go into creating an online business the wrong way without a plan. And uh, I'll tell you what, you don't want to do that because this can turn into a really expensive hobby. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. And I'm going to have to ask you this first. Are you creating a launch, a list? A product or are you creating an actual business because there's a big difference there's a very big difference and it's the reason you see people fall into this trap it's like okay well I mean, yeah I gotta make a product you know they just start about it ass backwards and they just start doing everything the wrong way and they're like well I heard you gotta create a product so I'm gonna start creating a product oh, I heard you gotta build a list so I'm gonna start building a list I heard I gotta do a launch and I'm gonna do a WSO and then they start doing that and okay well let me get a let me get a training product about how to make a WSO and then they do that and then what happens when that's done oh, I got I'm gonna have to do it again and then you find yourself into this cycle right this this you know self-defeating model of launch after launch after launch you don't you don't really have anything tangible you don't have a business you don't have something you can sell I mean, you don't have a business that you can sell. Right now, I can sell my business. I can sell my company. I have a million-dollar business. And I've built it over a period of five years alongside my wife, Melinda. And we've done it from home. And we did it by creating a catalog of products. We don't just have one thing. I didn't set out to make one launch. I set out to create a business. And the thing is, a lot of people don't do this. And you do it in your regular job, right? You take part in a regular business and you do things like planning and set goals and, and you know, you have reports that you have to hand into your boss every night. But when it comes to your own business, you don't do that. You just sit down, just like kind of shooting at the wind. Like you just kind of, you don't have a target, you don't have a plan, you don't have a work schedule, you don't have any of that. And then you wonder, well, why am I not making money? Well, that's why, dude, because you don't have a business plan. So how could you possibly consider yourself a business owner? It all starts with a pad and a pencil. That's it. That's all it takes. You just need to close the door and sit down and just meditate a little bit on what you're trying to accomplish. Open up a pad to a plain white piece of paper and grab your pencil and just start writing down some ideas, some goals. And then eventually what happens is those goals and those ideas from your pad, they move on to a whiteboard. You should have a whiteboard for your business. You know, having a business area in your house is very important. Are you running your business from like your kitchen table and your laptop and moving it around with you, you know, that doesn't really help in the beginning. You really should have an area that's your own. It's your company. This is the space. It's this little corner of the house. It's this little whiteboard. This is my calendar. This is my, you know, and, and the, the stuff on the pad moves over to the whiteboard. And I used to have a three foot whiteboard where I wrote down everything. I broke down my goals. I, I had a little calendar whiteboard kind of thing that I would fill in what I needed to do by certain dates. But that was my business. It was my business area. I had my desktop. I had my binders uh, with my notes. I had, you know, the eBooks that I had purchased and printed them out. They were on the desk there. I had my little, you know, my notebook with, you know, I would open it up every day. Uh, I, I had my computer and then I, well, I had an actual CRT monitor, like a regular computer. And then I had a little laptop next to it that I would work together on both of those computers. Because sometimes I'd be watching a training video on one and then doing the actual thing that I was being trained on on the other computer. But the point that I'm making, I, has, I had a, a, a business area. That was my office in my house, and that's what I dedicated it to. You don't have to have a fancy schmancy, you know, high-rise office building or anything like that. You just need a little area that you can call your own, a little area that everybody else in the house knows not to mess with because that's mommy's business or that's daddy's business. 
and it's that important. And I even had a name for my company. You know, I had a name for my company, and I and I put it up on the top of the whiteboard. And Melinda bought me a little plate with my name on it. You know, like you put at your desk at work. You know, and I put that on the door. You know, and I was running it like a business, man. I was, I would, you know, get home and I'd go to work. <laughs> Literally, I'd get home from work and I'd go to work, and I'd go to work for myself, for me, for me and my family. And I took it very, very seriously. I envisioned a company long before it was even a company. I, I knew in my mind's eye what I wanted to build, and then I set out to build it. Run it like a business from day one, because as a hobby, this thing is more expensive than golf, let me tell you. If you're treating this like a hobby, it's going to treat you like a hobbyist. You're not going to be, you know, the average person that plays golf doesn't make money from it. The average person that builds model airplanes doesn't make money from it. The average person that makes scrapbooks doesn't make money from it. Those are hobbies. They buy the stuff that they need to partake in the hobby, but they don't really make any money from it because they're not looking at it as a business. They're looking at it as something to do. And let me tell you something. There's a lot of internet marketing products out there that you can fall victim to and buy and it becomes rather expensive. Uh, you may be there. You may be there right now. A hard drive full of products and stuff that you've done nothing with. Or stuff that you've started and given up after two videos because it didn't quite turn out to be what you wanted it to be. Whose fault is that? It's your fault, man. It's not anybody else's fault but yours because you didn't have a proper plan. and You didn't buy the proper tool for the proper job. And that's what we're going to talk about next. Now, I want to cover a couple of things here, and I'm not going to sugarcoat any of it. Obviously, you know that I'm, I'm not known for sugarcoating things. And first of all, I'm going to say these two things. You have to be self-motivated, and you have to be ready to get your ass kicked. Does that bother you? Does that scare you? Let me tell you something. If you're going to be an entrepreneur, and you're going to build something of great value from scratch, you've got to be willing to take the punches. And you're going to take some punches right on the chin. And you're going to have to learn. You're, you're venturing into something new. Uh, and like with anything else, there is going to be a learning curve. You're going to try things that don't work. You're going to fall flat on your face. And it's not about, uh, you know, how many times you, you know, tried. It's, uh, it's about how many times you got back up and you got on the horse again and, and you tried again, right? So it's important that you be self-motivated to do that. If you're the kind of person that is still in a stage in your life where you, you got to get up. Uh, oh, go on. I got to go sit at the computer and do work. Oh, go. Dude, you're not going to build a business. I'm sorry. If you're the kind of person that needs others to motivate you, that, that you can't get started, you can't get rock and roll, and you can't sit down and work hard for hours at a time without somebody on your back, without listening to two hours of Tony Robbins to get you all amped up, without drinking 10 cans of Red Bull, if, if you're that person, chances are you're going to get your ass kicked because building a business takes a lot of work. It takes hard work and dedication and you're going to try things and you're going to invest your time and your energy and then it's not going to work and you're going to look, you know, you're going to shed tears and you're going to, you're going to sweat and you're going to, you're going to realize that being successful is, is tough. It's hard. And you're going to realize that once you start making progress, sometimes you got to take a step back in order to make two steps forward. And it's not always roses and daisies on the other side of the fence, okay? You actually will be getting your ass kicked. So you need to be a self-motivated person, a go-getter, somebody that wants to achieve goals. You have to be driven. And that's important. I'm not going to make this a big motivational, vid a motivational video. That's not what this is about. But it's important that you understand that it's hard. It's hard work. Maybe you haven't heard somebody say that to you before. Maybe everybody that you've listened to in the past as far as building your online business has been trying to sell you something. And so they've been telling you, yeah, it's going to be awesome. You don't got to do nothing. Just pay me $47. And then you can copy this little line of secret code that exposes this loophole that automatically pours money into your paper. doesn't work that way. Okay, building a business takes hard work. Ask any entrepreneur. Walk into any pizzeria and talk to the guy that built it. Talk to the guy that screwed every light bulb in there. The guy that actually sweated it out while he was having two customers a day buying pizzas. The guy that actually had to go out and buy the oven. The guy that had to set the tables. The guy, the guy that did all the work or the, or the lady that did all the work. Go to any business owner and ask them what it took to get there. And they're going to say hard work. 
None of them is gonna. None of them are gonna say, "Oh man, this is awesome." Yeah, no, I, I didn't have to do anything from the day I started. Yeah, no, this is awesome. Unless they had a bunch of money and they already bought a, a, a business that's, that was rolling. Right? Does that make sense? Of course, that makes sense because that's reality. And for some reason, people fall victim to this whole vision of like, "Oh, I don't got to do nothing if it's an online business. If it's an online business, yeah, that's easy. Yeah, that, what?" What, what planet are you on? It's not easy. It's hard work. Any type of venture where you're going to be your own boss requires you to be self-motivated. Now, these are the things that typically motivate people. They're the four Fs. Now, you can probably argue with me, no, Omar, no, there's more. There's other things. Okay, fine. You know, I'm not, I'm not Maslow. We're not going to talk about the hierarchy of needs or anything like that here. <laughs> We're going to cover the four basic principles that motivate people to take action and build a business. Fame, family, freedom, and fortune. Now, some people like to do things and because they like to see their name up in lights. They love the paparazzi. They love uh, having a circle around them at an event. They love the fame of it. They love being the center of attention, and they work their ass off to be the center of attention. So are you that person? Because that's not a bad thing at all. I know a lot of people that are actually, they just love having their name up in lights. They love being the speaker on stage, and they work their ass off to deserve that position and that fame. And that's perfectly fine. Another big motivator is family. Sometimes you just want to do good for your family. You want to put your kids through college. You want someone in your, ha in your family to have a better life than you did. So you don't care about the fame. You don't care about the freedom of the fortune. You don't care. You just want to do whatever it takes so that your family can have a better life than you did. Some people are motivated by freedom, and that was me. Uh, for me, yeah, fortune is great, making money is great, but for me it was freedom. I hated that people had control of my life. My boss determined, you know, what type of money I was making. You know, it was, it was terrible. Like, I, I just hated having to, you know, wake up to an alarm clock, and I wanted, you know, it was, I, I, I wanted freedom. I wanted to be able to go to a restaurant and read the menu from left to right. And, and unfortunately, because of the money that I was making, I, I actually had to go in there and read it from right to left. Like, I'd go down the menu and be like, okay, let's see, $3.99, uh, let's see, $13.99, $2.99, oh, wait, $1.99, go to the left, French fries. That's what I'm having. I'm having French fries. Yeah, I hated that. You know, I want to go into a restaurant and just order what I want to eat, you know, and I hated that I didn't have that control over my own life. So for me, it was freedom that motivated me. You know, for some people, it's fortune. They just want to acquire great wealth. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with abundance. There's nothing wrong with having everything that you didn't have when you were a kid. There's nothing wrong with acquiring the wealth to support the charities that you believe in. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. And these are the four main motivators. Which one are you? You might be a little bit of both. But it's good to find those things about yourself. Find out those things about yourself and use them as triggers to get you to do what it's going to take, to take the blows and to keep moving forward. It's important that you're willing to do what others won't in order to have what others don't. I'm going to say that again. You must be willing to do what others won't in order to have what others don't. My friends, and even family members would laugh at me. They'd say, you're freaking crazy, Omar. You work, what, 10, 12 hours a day at your regular job. Then you come home and put in another six or seven hours in front of your computer? Are you kidding me? The game's on tonight. What? We're going, at, we're going fishing this weekend. What you, it's a weekend, man. And I'm like, no, I got a business to build, man. I got a business to build. But you know what? Those people are still working today. <laughs> you know, I can go fishing now whenever the hell I want, wherever I want. If I want to get onto a plane right now and go with my wife to wherever to go fishing, I can. You know, and, and those people can't do that. And I was willing to do what they were not willing to do in order to have today what they don't have. And that is the kind of thinking that motivated me. That is the kind of thinking that repaid me. And that is what uh, uh, got me going and kept me going and, and brought us to where we are. I was fortunate to have a very supportive spouse. Not others. Uh, a lot of people don't have a supportive spouse. So let me tell you something. If you don't have a supportive spouse, there's other problems going on. If your spouse does not support what you're doing, you have other issues in your marriage that you need to address. If your spouse does not believe in what you're doing, then you should address some underlying problems there. Um, I involved Melinda. I involved my spouse. I let her know what I was doing. I understood from the beginning that I was going to be locked away in this room for hours at a time and working on my computer. And I knew that if I didn't involve her, if I didn't tell her what I was doing and let her know what my goals were and showed her my progress, I know she was going to be sitting in the other room 
wondering what the hell I'm doing by myself in that room locked up in front of a computer, right? That's number one. Number two, I knew that she was going to become lonely. And, and you know what? She was lonely. For many, she went to bed by herself many times. That doesn't happen anymore. Uh, you know, I, I now, you know, have the freedom to be able to take a nap in the middle of the day with my wife on a Tuesday, whenever I want. As a matter of fact, today she came in and said, hey, you want to take a nap? And I said, yeah, let's go. You know, so I, I, again, it, it, it was important to involve my spouse. Now, she, I didn't involve her in the sense of like gave her work to do, but I involved her in the sense of told her what I was doing. I, I let her know, hey, honey, look, I want to show you. This is what I'm doing. Uh, I'm, I'm doing this because if I if I build this website and I'm, I'm following this training and if I do this by this date, I might be able to make a little bit of money for us and this and that. And then she was like, oh, okay, show me. And then every couple of days I would give her an update and let her know what we're doing. And I would even involve her in the sense where like, look, I'm going to set a goal for myself and I want to go out to the movies and we're going to see this and then go have a uh, date night if I can hit this goal on this date. And you know what's funny? When I did that, she would come in and check on me and say, hey, so what are you up to? Did you do the, the site? Did you already do the ClickBank thing you were talking about? Well, what's going on? Because if you don't finish that today, then we're not going to be able to go tomorrow. You said we're going to go to the movies. And, 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 uh, and, you know, kept me on my game involving my spouse, you know. Um, it, it's important that you understand uh, the difference between time and money. Um, a lot of people mix this up. It's, it's to me, it was a fundamental understanding, uh, but to others, it, it, it isn't. To a lot of people that have been stuck in that nine to five mentality, they're stuck in that time for money mentality. They think, okay, well, I put in eight hours today. That means I should get $80 because eight hours at $10 an hour equals $80. That's the case when you're working for somebody else. That isn't the case when you're working for yourself, and it definitely isn't the case when you're building your business in the beginning. And sometimes it's tough for your spouse to understand that. And if your spouse is giving you a hard time about it, it's usually because you're having money problems. And if you're having money problems, this might not be the best time to invest in a business. Because a business takes a significant investment of time and money. You ask any business owner, any business owner, I challenge you to walk into any business and talk to the owner and say, hey, did you build this business without investing any time or any money? I challenge you to find somebody that tells me that, that tells you that they did. Right? And you might you might be lucky enough to say, yeah, I inherited it from my dad. You you might find somebody like that. But chances are you didn't. However, you feel that you can go and do that for yourself. You feel that you're losing your, your house and you're in foreclosure and now's the time to start a business? That isn't the case. And this perhaps is the underlying problem and the, you know, the, the underlying thinking that's causing you to have the problems with your spouse because your spouse is expecting you to provide money for the mortgage this week. And you decided that you're going to do that by, you know, starting an online business. It makes no sense. That's like, I got to get to California by tomorrow. And instead of looking for the best airfare online, you start looking for instructions to build a plane. It makes no sense, but in your insanity, you're thinking that you're going to be able to do that. And Omar Martin here is shooting that down and tell you, telling you you can build a business, but you're not going to build it like that. And you need to involve, involve your spouse, and you need to get to the root of those issues with your spouse uh, in order to be able to move forward. Let me tell you something. Having your spouse on your side uh, or your partner in business is huge. You know, uh, It's helped me quite a bit. Uh, especially when I was able to retire my wife. For, for about a year, we were able to support both of us with, with the online income, but she wouldn't quit her job. She wanted, you know, she was like, no, 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 no. I want to be, you know, I want to be secure. I want to be, she tells the story a lot better than I do. But uh, my point is that once that she did get involved, I, I mean, my productivity just like, you know, it was 10 times more than, than what it was. You know, you expect it to double. It didn't double. It like quadrupled or more because now two people together, you know, working on each other's, uh, you know, uh, her strengths and my strengths, it just, it just was a great partnership, you know. Uh, and, and the other thing that's it's important for you to understand when we're talking about, you know, being self-motivated and taking, taking action on your business, you got to understand when action actually takes place. You know, sometimes you're ready for a business, but the opportunity isn't there. Sometimes the opportunity is there, but you're not just not ready. Action takes place at the cross of an X. Action takes place when opportunity meets readiness. Okay, so here's what I mean by that. Sometimes 
you know, the opportunity is there and you find something online and you're like, oh my God, look at this perfect opportunity. This is great. But you're just not ready, man. You're just not ready. You can't afford groceries this week. You can't afford to pay your bills right now. What you need is a second job. The opportunity might be there, but the readiness isn't. Sometimes you're ready. Man, I am I am ready, but the opportunity just isn't there. You just, you, you don't have the, the finances, the budget, the, you know, the capital to get started, you know. So it, it's when the two things meet, it's when opportunity meets readiness that actually takes place and if you take action with one of those missing you're gonna fall flat on your face you're one of those people that gets their asses kicked and oh, man, it doesn't work yeah, it's a tough racket yeah I tried that don't be that guy make sure that opportunity and readiness are both there that is when you take action so let's talk about the goals and the business plan right because that's exactly what I wanted to cover in this video you need to forecast your year not your week you know, you, when you're sitting down to build an online business from home, you need to forecast your entire year just like real businesses do. Just like, your, the, you know, the manager of your company does. You know, your manager, uh, wherever you work, he's got to create a business plan and submit it to his manager. And his manager's got to go to the general manager and to eventually the CEO and, and whatever. We create goals. We forecast our quarter, then our year. You know, then we have a five-year plan. Every company creates SMART goals, S-M-A-R-T, and that's what we're going to talk about right now. Your goals have to be specific. You have to picture every single little detail. The more vivid the picture in your mind's eye, the greater likelihood that it'll be manifested. If your picture is blurry, if you don't really have an exact idea of what you want to do, then it's probably not going to happen. If you're looking to buy a car and you want a specific car, you need to know the color, you need to go know the, the interior, you need to know the features, you need to know the make, the model, everything. The more detailed your, your vision is of that car, the more likelihood that you'll be able to manifest it. Same goes with your online business goals. The better and the more specific that vision is, and that attention to detail, the more likely you will be to manifest it. Measurable. Your goals have to be measurable. You need to create specific benchmarks. People sometimes say, yeah, I have a goal. My goal is to be rich in 2013. Well, you're, you're going to fail, dude, because your goal is not specific enough. How, it, it has to be specific, attainable, realistic, very important that it's measurable. So you need to be able to break a big goal down into a series of small attainable goals. So instead of saying, okay, well, I'm going to be rich, you need to, you need to say, okay, well, how specific is that? How rich do you want to be? I want to make $100,000 in the year, you know, 2013. I want to put $100,000 in the bank, liquid. I want to see that in my savings account. Now, that's, that's attainable, and you have to make it measurable. Well, how are you going to put that hundred thousand dollars in there. There's a whole lot of different ways to do it because you could either put eight thousand dollars a month into a bank account, right? Or you could put, uh, you know, ten months into a project and then launch that project and make that hundred thousand dollars in the last month of the year, right? Uh, there's there's a lot of different ways to do it. You could do two launches. Two products, create two products, one in the first six months, one in the second six months. You could, you know, put $50,000 in the bank with the first one, $50,000 in the bank with the second one, right? So what I'm saying is there's, there's multiple ways that you can generate that wealth and you need to create measurable goals, right? And the way to do it is really to uh, create a timeline and then actually set little benchmarks for yourself. Okay, so this month I want to have generated $2,000. And the way that I'm going to do that is in the first week I'm going to create this website. In the second week I'm going to do this. In the third week I'm going to do that. And by the fourth week I will have already made, uh, you know, the third week I made uh, 250 By the third, the fourth week I'll make 350 and I'll be at the, you know, you see what I'm saying? You're creating little benchmarks on a timeline that you can then see if you're hitting those goals. So week number two comes along and in your morning meeting that you have with yourself every week, right? You look at your goals, you look at your whiteboard, you turn around, you say, okay, well, let's see. Today is the 14th of the month. I was already supposed to have the website up and I was already supposed to have this if I was going to make my $1,000 this month, which is on track for me hitting my 100,000 at the end of the year. But it's already day 14 and I haven't even done that. So if you've missed that goal, what are the chances are you getting to the next one? to the next benchmark, right? Do you see what I'm getting? Measurable. They have to be measurable. Create specific benchmarks for yourself to stop and review your progress. And if you don't hit that benchmark, don't worry about it. Your goals don't change. The only thing that changes is your date. 
Okay, you just got to move the date, make it a little bit more realistic. Now, your goals have to be attainable. These benchmarks have to be attainable. Don't set yourself up for failure. And this is one of the biggest issues that people have is that they have a blurry, fuzzy vision of what they want to do. Like, oh, yeah, this is great. Oh, my God, look at that guy. Look at his ClickBank account. I saw a screenshot, and he's making 7000 a week. Wow, that's freaking awesome. I want to do that. How do they? Oh, he made an ebook. Let me start making an ebook. I'm going to start making an ebook. And it's like, okay, what's your business plan? I don't know. I'm just going to make an ebook because that guy makes 7000 a week, and I know that I got to make ebooks. Well, dude, you're going to fail. You know, how do you know that that's even attainable for you? Did you research the exact requirements and plan accordingly? Maybe you don't have the skill set necessary to create an ebook and launch a product like he does. Have you looked into it? Because if you haven't, you're just setting yourself up for failure. And then here's what's going to happen. You're going to make this like imaginary date in your mind based on absolutely no facts uh, uh, that you have on yourself. And, and, and you're not going to hit the goal. And then you're going to be like, oh, this sucks. And then you're going to get all down on yourself. And since you don't have Tony Robbins sitting next to you to, to motivate you, then you're going to like quit and you're going to be one of the 97 percentile that doesn't make it. You don't have to be that guy if you create attainable, uh, smart goals, okay? And they have to be realistic. You know, no pie in the sky goals. You know, not everyone can become Michael Jordan. You have to know your limits and you have to work to surpass them, but you have to know your limitations. You know, I know what I can do and I know what I can't do. And I strive to get better at things that I'm good at and I strive to learn some things that I don't know, but it's important that I'm realistic. A saying to myself, hey, I'm going to make $100,000 this month and, and avoid bankruptcy when I've never even learned. It's, it's, it's crazy. You know what I mean? It's, it's like you wouldn't go to college, right? Okay. You wouldn't set yourself a goal like, look, next month I'm going to do neurosurgery and make $100,000 from, from a procedure. That I, you wouldn't do that. Why? Why wouldn't you do that? Because it's conventional wisdom tells us, well, to become a surgeon, you've got to go to college. Then you've got to go to four years of medical school. Then you've got to do an internship and a residency and you've got to study in your specialty. It's a good nine to 10 years before they're even going to let you touch a patient to actually do surgery. So that, that goal of making a hundred grand next month by doing a surgical precision, that's a bit of a pie in the sky kind of, kind of, it's not attainable, but people make these ridiculous assumptions all the time when it's an online business for some reason. You think like there's nothing you have to learn. You think you don't have to get your bachelor's degree in, in marketing and learn how to do these things. Well, you do. Uh, so you need to know your limits and you got to work to surpass them, but you can't give yourself these pie in the sky goals. They have to be realistic and they have to be timely. You have to put exact dates and times on your goals and reward yourself for hitting them. You know, we're creatures of habit. And when you treat yourself good for accomplishing something, it's important that you reward yourself. You know, so maybe your reward for hitting a certain goal and maybe you're doing you're doing a 30 day challenge on your blog and your 30 day challenge is you want to do a blog post every single day with a video for 30 days. Maybe that's what you're challenging yourself to do. And that's that's a challenge. Let me tell you, I, I know it was for me. And it, it, you challenge yourself to do that. And then when you're done, maybe have a getaway for a day. Maybe, maybe have a, a, a you know road trip for a day or, or a weekend with the family. Maybe go to the beach. Maybe treat yourself and your wife to a nice dinner at Red Lobster or whatever. Melinda and I like to go to, web, uh, to uh, uh, Red Lobster, you know. But uh, do something nice that, that you like to do as a reward for hitting that goal. Because you know what? You're going to strive harder for your next one because it's going to turn into a habit. So create smart goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, and timely. Now, when you start thinking like a business, you're going to need to start creating these mindsets, these things in, in your life, in your business life, even if it's at home. You need to ask yourself things like, what are my departments? What are the departments for my company? What's my timeline and my work schedule for those departments? What are my budgets? Each department has to have a budget. What's my starting capital? What money have I set aside to run this business? Because let me tell you something. If you're already having money problems and you're having a hard time with your spouse, trying to you know believe in what you're doing and everything, the moment that you come up to her and say, hey, I've got a, you know, it's $1,000 for this training program, what do you think is going to happen? Yeah, she's not going to, oh, okay, no problem, honey. Yeah, go ahead and spend the $1,000 that we don't have. You know, you know, that's not going to happen. So you need to you know, factor these things in just like any regular business person would do when they're thinking of venturing into a business. What are your departments? Okay, so 
you're going to have to have a marketing department, a research and development department, a customer service department. And if you're the only employee of your company, then you're going to need to be the person working those departments each day. But so many people don't create a schedule for themselves. You know, when I first started, and I knew I was working six hours a day on my business because I would go to sleep about three o'clock in the morning. You know, I'd come home from work about nine uh, and, and I'd start working on my business after I'd have a quick dinner with my wife in front of the TV, watch American Idol or something. Then I'd go into the room and I'd start working on my business five or six hours every single night or until I couldn't take it anymore and I had to go to sleep. Uh, and I would I would break down a schedule for myself. So, okay, for the first hour, I'm going to be doing research. Uh, so I'm going to be in the forums. I'm going to be doing market research. I'm going to be doing stuff to teach myself about my market. And, and you know, I'm going to be doing social branding or whatever it is. Then for another hour per day, I'm going to be in development. I'm going to work in my development department, so I'm going to be working on my website building. I'm going to be working on my uh, product creation. Then I'm going to be working on customer service. Now, you know, I, I can adjust customer service because until I've launched my product, I don't really have any customer service. So maybe I'll dedicate 30 minutes a day to start building my support desk or creating a support email or support response templates or whatever. You know, but again, every single day I have, I'm working a schedule just like you do at your job for your boss. You see, one of the biggest issues that people have is they'll go and they'll do, they'll work a schedule for someone else. But then when it comes to working for yourself, for your own business, for where it really matters, you don't care. Ah, yeah, oh, today I'm too tired, I'm not gonna work today. Ah, uh, you know what, yeah, this is a pain in the ass. Yeah, I'm not gonna do article writing today in traffic because that's like, uh, I hate doing that. What are your budgets? Do you have a budget for every department? I'll tell you. In a regular company, the sales manager has a budget for his sales reps. The uh, customer service department has a, a budget for uh, the customer service people. You know, every department has a budget. The marketing department has to have a budget. How are you going to buy marketing material, business cards for your people? You need to have a budget. But you can't create budgets and, and determine what your investment capital and what your startup capital is going to be if you don't even know what your departments are going to be and you haven't created a timeline and a schedule. You see how these things are all interconnected? It all starts in that notepad and that piece of paper where you start writing down your vision. When you start actually writing down on that whiteboard and literally creating a vision and a map for your company. These are the kind of things that you should be contemplating in the beginning of creating your business. If you're thinking about, yeah, yeah, I gotta build an ebook, I gotta make an ebook, because I learned from Omar that I gotta make an ebook, and he does 7,000 a week on ebooks. Dude, no, I don't. I, I do 7,000 a week just with my affiliate marketing. That's just my, my yeah, that's just our, our list that we built of customers in our business. There's a big difference. These are the departments that I created in my company when it was just me in that room. Research. I needed to research every single day. What do I have to learn to make all this happen? Especially in the beginning. Research in the beginning for me was about teaching myself what I needed to make it happen. Development. I, I, what skills and tools am I gonna need to acquire? Because I knew, I understood like, oh my God, this internet marketing thing, I don't know anything about it. Building a website, what the hell? You know, back then it was a little different. We didn't have WordPress. It wasn't as prevalent as it is now anyway. Uh, yeah, I didn't need to know HTML and front page and I had to build my sites, you know? And man, that was a mission learning the HTML code and I sucked at graphics, but I had to teach it to myself. So, so before I could even contemplate putting up a website, I needed to research and learn what I was gonna make that website about, what product I should be getting involved in. Then I need to learn how I'm gonna develop it because I don't have the money to actually put up the, you know, I didn't have the capital to actually hire someone to do it for me. Then I had to put in time into marketing. Okay, well, how am I gonna spread the word about it? I had to create profiles for myself at Twitter, Facebook. I had to make sure that people in my, my niche that I had researched were already learning about me and who I am and that I'm a person of value that they should listen to. Um, then fulfillment, that's another big one. Like, how am I gonna sell and deliver my, my product? You know, every company, uh, you know, business is the exchange of goods and services for money. Okay, it's, it, that's that's called business. You know, it's commerce. You know, so how, what platform, how are you going to do that? Are you going to do that over a counter in a brick and mortar business where you're literally handing a product, a physical item to someone and collecting money and putting it in a cash register? Because if you are, you need that product, you need that counter, and you need that cash register. And those things, those items, those tools cost money to run your business. It's called fulfillment. 
are you in the shipping business? Are you, do you need to hire a fulfillment company that's going to actually ship a physical item to people? Or are you delivering that item digitally? If so, you need hosting. You need a payment processor like PayPal or a, or a merchant account. You need a fulfillment side to your business. So that's a department itself. And customer service. How are you going to track all of these customers? Do you have a way to email them and keep in touch with them and deliver your goods? That's important. So these are the departments in the beginning that I focused on. Research, develop, mar marketing, development, marketing, fulfillment, and customer service. You might have more departments, depending on what it is that you're doing. Let's talk about research. Every single business starts with an idea or a vision. You don't start building a house without a blueprint and a whole lot of vision. Because if you do, you're probably not going to end up with a house that's very sturdy. You got to accept the fact that you're not going to be jumping on the scene here and changing the internet marketing landscape with what you know from your prior business. You're still going to need to learn this field. You may be an awesome underwater basket weaver, but just because you are does not mean that you're going to jump on the scene and sell a gazillion dollars of underwater basket weaving ebooks in week one. You've got to learn the field. And this one, this reality is one that really smacked me in the face, okay? Because I thought that I was an awesome salesman, and I was door-to-door -door sales and telephone sales. Online selling is different, and it requires a unique set of skills. I needed to learn this field. You got to do your homework, and you got to create a map for what you want to build. Learn about the marketplace that you're going to be selling in, and find, for God's sake, find the buyers first. Have you ever heard someone, or maybe it's been you, saying, how do I get traffic to my website? You know why you're asking yourself that? Because you didn't find the buyers first. If you find the buyers, if you find people in need, and then you create a, a product that solves their need, you will never have a traffic problem. Why? Because you created a product for the buyers you already found. Do your research. Don't create traffic for a website. Create a website for the traffic totally different mentality than brick and mortar, okay? Development. That's the other department. Most people jump right into this phase and they never get out of it. Don't do that. Don't be that guy. Most people, they're like, oh my God, look, look at this page. Hey, look, Ethel, I can make all this money if I buy this ebook and I start, and they jump and they buy this ebook that teaches them how to make ebooks. And they, they're right, they're in development. They're right away, they're into the development department. That's all they do. And then when they're done, it's like, okay, well now I have this ebook. What the hell do I do with it? I don't know. There's a difference between a general contractor, a developer, and a carpenter. You got to know your role, as they say in the hood. Know what you're doing and know which hat you're wearing. You should be working on your business and not particularly in your business. In the beginning, depending on how much capital you have to start off with, you might find yourself in the business, rolling up the sleeves, you know, doing a lot more of the work than you would hope to be. But that's what I talked about in the beginning. You're going to get your ass kicked and you're going to have to put in the hard work in the beginning because no matter how you look at it, you're going to pay for the things you need in your business, period. Don't fall victim to the mentality that you don't have to pay for things because everything is free. No, you're going to pay. You're either going to pay with money or you're going to pay with time. So either you have the money to buy those graphics you need or you're going to need to invest the time into learning how to make them yourself, period. Factor both of those things into the development equation for your business, time and money. Create a plan and use a project management system or some sort of an accountability partner. That's, a, that's important. And you know, some sort of a project management system doesn't have to be some fancy thing like, like Basecamp or Active Club. It could just be your whiteboard, man. It could be a little little calendar book that you keep on your on your on your desk. It could be a system where you check off every, you know, before you start working every day, you check off the things you want to do and then the things that you didn't finish yesterday and you move them over to today. Just create some sort of a system for yourself. Manage your time wisely. Your boss expects you to manage your time wisely when you're working for him well why the hell wouldn't you manage your time wisely when you're working for you and if you're having a hard time with this and you're spending too much time on Facebook why don't you find yourself an accountability partner sometimes a business partner somebody that you're working with that you're checking their stuff and they're checking your stuff on on check-in day sometimes this really really helps to keep you on pace if it's somebody that you trust and respect and you don't want to let down this really, really helps. So maybe create a plan for yourself and implement and share it with somebody share it with an accountability partner your marketing department. This is a tough one. Raising brand awareness takes time. You can't, this doesn't happen overnight. You know, there's a difference in marketing and selling. Marketing is raising awareness, getting people to know about your product, getting people to know who you are and what you're selling.
you need to make time for this daily. For me, in the beginning, it was about writing and creating art articles about myself and bringing people to my blog. It was about posting on my blog and communicating with the world. Uh, I, I used to do a lot of article submissions uh, to drive traffic to my blog. I used to create videos for my blog. And in the beginning, nobody was watching them but me and Melinda that I would say, hey, did you see the video? I you know what I mean? But that, that all grows. The more you do it, the more that it grows. The better you research, and this is important, like your departments, they build on one another, right? Because the better your research department is, the more successful your marketing department is. If you research really well about your niche and what people need, it's going to become very easy to market because you know exactly what to create and who to create it for and where to place it once it's created. So your marketing material becomes really easy to hand out. So look at it in a, phys in a physical sense, right? Let's say that you are creating a product in under ba underwater basket weaving, right? And let's say that you found this source of under basket, underwater basket weavers and they meet once a year at this big conference center and you go out and you create this product for underwater basket weavers because you've been learning all year what their biggest problems are and, and what they need solutions for because they talk to each other in the underwater basket weaver forums and, and you've gone and you've created this product and you had it all printed up and now you know exactly where that event is and you're going to go to that event and you're going to hand out business cards. Right, so now that's a good use of your time. And because your research department was so good, your marketing is going to be really good because you're going to know exactly what to develop and where to go hand it out and where to build that following. Now, this is a multifaceted department that can become a time hog, right? Because you might say to yourself, well, I've got to raise brand awareness inside of Facebook, inside of Twitter, inside of YouTube. I got to do blogging. I got to do article creation. Yeah, it is a time hog, especially in the beginning. And you got to have to learn to outsource here. So this is probably going to require you uh, spending some time in each one of those things and limiting yourself and saying, I've recently started setting in a, a timer uh, on my desktop. I have my iPad and I have this big countdown timer that's just rolling on the screen there uh, so that I know I limit myself to certain time on certain sites. You know, so I only do a certain amount on Twitter, a certain amount on, on Facebook, a certain amount on YouTube. And you got to be creating content and putting things out there that are going to raise your brand awareness and let people know about your product and your brand. And then if there's parts of these that you don't enjoy doing, outsource those. Okay, so this is where you're going to want to have a budget for yourself, right? So if I don't like writing articles, then I may want to outsource that part of my business. If I want two, three new articles a week, then I might need to hire somebody to create those articles. I give them the topics, they write the articles, you know, and and, and that's something that I, I outsource. Melinda used to write my articles, and before that, we used to have ghostwriters write the articles. I would edit them, put them up on my blog, okay? So there's parts of your business that you can outsource, but you're going to need to factor that stuff in, and, and your marketing can be a time hog if you don't plan it properly. Fulfillment. Now, and this is where we talk about building the sites, the sites that are going to sell your product and deliver your product. Uh, you're going to need to have a system in place for collecting money, for delivering the product or the service, and this can be 99% automated uh, using services like ClickBank, Pay.com, JVZoo. The whole payment processor thing uh, can be automated, but again, you're going to need to learn about that stuff. So you're going to need to dedicate time to fulfillment, to educating yourself on how am I going to fulfill my customer's needs. And once they purchase my product, first of all, how am I going to sell it? So are you the guy that has to buy the cash register and the, the counter uh, or the display case because you have your brick and mortar business, you know, what's your display case and your sales counter uh, online? What's your website, right? So you're going to need to learn that whole website creation process and how am I going to create that sales page and what am I going to need? What tools am I going to need? And how am I going to learn how to set this up so that it runs on autopilot so that I don't have to be, uh, be here every single day? Uh, and, and remember, you can also automate physical fulfillment services. There are companies out there that will fulfill your physical products. So if you're creating CDs, DVDs, or if you're literally selling baskets, uh, for people too that, that you've opened underwater, you can actually hire companies that will ship those out for you. There's fulfillment companies out there like Kayako, Dis.com. There's a whole bunch of them that will fulfill your products and services for you. And speaking of service, customer service. You're going to need to expand this as your business grows. And this becomes more and more complicated as your business gets bigger. Initially, you can handle this yourself via email. But if you're doing things right in all the other departments, you're going to need a dedicated help desk pretty quickly because you're going to start acquiring new leads, new clients, new customers. And you're going to want to have a more reliable way to um, communicate with your customers than email. Email is not reliable for strangers or people you've just met. Because since there hasn't been a lot of correspondence back and forth, your email client or the service you're using, whether it's email, uh, AOL mail or Hotmail or, or Gmail or whatever, uh, it, it's going to end up throwing 
those customer emails, those emails from your customers into the spam box and they can go unnoticed or even worse, your reply to them could go into the spam box and they don't even know you're answering their question. That is terrible for business. Now in the beginning, you can, there are ways around this. There are little WordPress plugins and things that you can use. But at the end of the day, if you're doing everything right in your other departments, your customer service requirements are going to grow and they're going to grow fast. It's important that you treat your customers like gold. You know, things go viral very quickly nowadays. And just as quickly as people's positive testimonials about you can spread on the internet, so can their negative reviews. We are in a review society. People want to read about you and know about you before they do business with you. You need to delight your customer. You need to make sure that every single person that you sell to becomes a customer cup for life. You know, and some people are saying to myself, well, do, you know, some people think that what they want to generate is a satisfied customer. Ah, I just want to make them happy and then that's it. So he goes away. No. You know, it, it, you don't want to satisfy customer. You want a loyal customer, okay? You want to generate loyal customers, not satisfied customers. And ask yourself this. Would you prefer that your spouse be loyal or satisfied? <laughs> right? You want a loyal customer, not a satisfied customer. There's a big difference. Accounting. This is a department that I wish I had paid much more attention to in the beginning. Don't underestimate the importance of proper bookkeeping. Before you know it, you'll blink and it's tax time. And that sucks. If you haven't been keeping your receipts, if you haven't been uh, uh, carefully, um, you know, keeping track of all your payments, your income, your expenses, it adds up. Every little expense adds up. Set up a corporation or an LLC. This is affordable to do. You can do this at LegalZoom.com uh, and, and, and you'll be doing things official. Um, you need to collect W-9s from affiliates. Like if you're, if you're actually doing business with affiliates and people are doing work for you, you need to save all of your receipts for anything that you buy. These things are important. You need to keep accurate spreadsheets uh, uh, from day one. Keep some accurate records of what you're doing so that when time comes to consult a accountant or you're doing your taxes at the end of the year, you're gonna want to have some some documentation. You can't just show up with a shoebox full of receipts, you know. Uh, in in the beginning, you want to dedicate a little time to this weekly. Keep a little spreadsheet for yourself. Okay, this is how much money I've spent. These products that I bought. This is how much I brought in. And and this grows. It becomes a daily task eventually. And this eventually means something that you outsource. Melinda does our bookkeeping right now, and we actually have. Well, she does low-level bookkeeping here in the house and then she collects everything puts it into spreadsheets gives it to our bookkeeper and our accountant that then put together all of our tax documents so again this is something that will grow over time but it's important that you start treating your business like a business from day one and the accounting department is important plan your work i think if there's one thing that i'm trying to get across here is you're needing your need for a business plan you need to have a, a, a plan and then you need to work that plan. Treat it like a business from day one if you expect it to treat you like a business owner. Start today. Grab that notepad, turn it to a blank page, start writing down your vision, start writing down the department, start doing your research, start creating a plan and start working that plan because that's the way that you're going to build an online business that you'll be able to pick fruits from for life, something that you'll be able to will to your children, something that'll really bring you to the, the income and the abundance that you, that you need and that you deserve. Plan your work, work your plan. Thanks for watching this video and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode. Take care.